The 2012 NASCAR Nationwide Series season featured many field fillers. One most notable that ran the entire season was a number 47 from the Motorsports Group team. Using only one car, along with an Earnhardt Childress engines, along with multiple drivers for the entire year, the 47 did its job in making races and helped funding the TMG main car, the number 40. Now join me as we look into the entire 2012 start and park season for the number 47 Motorsports Group Chevrolet. Race 1 at Daytona featured the 47 of Scott Speed. After practicing 37th in the first one and 39th in the second one, Speed needed to find more speed going into qualifying. Unfortunately, with little owner points to use from 2011, Scott Speed had to make the show on qualifying. But only qualifying 46th on the time trials, the 47 would miss the show by just over half a second. Although it was a DNQ, the 47 was listed 46th in the owner points to start the 2012 season. Race number two at Phoenix also featured driver Scott Speed. After practicing a very impressive 7th and also qualifying a very solid 20th, Speed made his first race of the season. After dropping back prior to the start, Speed took the green flag at the end of the pack. After three laps and following the 10 into the garage, Speed was listed 42nd on the charts, citing electrical issues and collecting $9,620 in purse money and placing the number 47 still 46th in the owner's points. Race number three at Las Vegas once again featured driver Scott Speed, once again also very impressing in practice, placing 25th, and repeating it once again in qualifying, placing 26th. Same as Phoenix, Speed would drop to the back prior to the start of the race, and after just three laps, followed the 74 into the garage to list in 42nd once again, citing a vibration, collecting $14,355 in purse money, and placing the 47 now 48th in the owner's points, sadly a downgrade. Race number four at Bristol once again featured driver Scott Speed. Speed participated in both practice sessions the first time since Daytona, mainly doing qualifying runs as 46 cars did show up for the 43 spots. Speed was 27th in the first practice and 33rd in the second practice. Speed was able to solidly make the show in qualifying, placing the 47 22nd. However, once again, Speed would drop to the rear prior of the start of the race. Speed would run more laps than his last two races, logging six laps and pulling in after the 10 and the 42 had already parked. The 47 would get its best finish of the season so far of 41st, citing a vibration, collecting $16,775 in purse money, and moving the 47 up to 47th in the owner points. Race number five at Auto Club once again featured driver Scott Speed. Speed showed the same promise once again, practicing strongly in the top 30 and qualifying a very solid 23rd, beating the primary TMG full race car by over half a second. However, following the same model as before, Speed would drop to the rear prior to the start of the race. The 47 would run less laps than Bristol, totaling in at just four laps before pulling in after the 72 and 10 entries had parked. The 47 would tie its best finish of the season of 41st, once again citing a vibration, collecting $14,020 in purse money, and moving the 47 up to 45th in the owner's points. Race number six at Texas featured driver Scott Speed once again. Though the speed wasn't quite the same for Scott and the 47, running a combined just three laps of both practice sessions and only being 37th in the first one, and 34th in practice two. Qualifying would not be much of an improvement as he was only 35th fastest, the 47's second slowest qualifying run of the year. Since they did qualify so far back, the 47 did not elect to drop to the rear and simply started the race in 35th. Speed would run the most laps the 47 had done all year, logging seven laps before pulling off after citing a fuel pump issue and finishing 41st for the third straight week collecting $14,720 in purse money and keeping the 47 45th in owner's points. Race 7 at Richmond once again featured driver Scott Speed. Same as Texas, the 47 did not show much speed in the only practice, running just four laps and ending up 34th. 
Qualifying didn't far much better as the 47 got its second slowest qualifying session of the season, being only 36 fastest. Just like Texas, the 47 did not drop to the rear as it was already near the back of the field anyway. Speed beat the last week's lap count, setting the new record for the 47 this season, logging nine laps before pulling off, citing an electrical issue. The 47 got its best finish of the season so far in 40th, collecting $12,380 in purse money and keeping the 47 45th in the owner's points. Race 8 at Talladega once again featured driver Scott Speed. 47 Speed was super slow in the only practice, running four laps, with the fastest lap being 14 seconds off the leader, leading to believe that the car was not properly set up for a plate race likely. With qualifying rained out, the 47 lined up 41st on the grid, the worst starting spot of the season. Speed kept up the back of the pack just after the green flag, but after two laps, pulled off into the garage, citing an ignition issue. Getting its third 42nd place finish of the season, the 47 collected $14,325 in purse money and dropped to 46th in the owner points. Race 9 at Darlington featured again driver Scott Speed. 47 showed more pace than Talladega at least, but barely cracking the top 35 in practice. With no DNQs, 47 Speed ran a clean lap and lined up 33rd on the grid. As with qual qualifying this far back, the 47 did not drop to the rear and simply started the race in 33rd. Two laps in, though, there was a crash that did, unfortunately, take out one of his teammates. Luckily, although it happened in front of him, the 47 was able to keep it out of the way and win one piece. Speed, however, would immediately pull off just after the wreck had happened and had logged just two laps, finishing in 42nd, citing a clutch issue, collecting $10,235 in owner in purse money and dropping the 47 47th in owner points race number 10 at iowa would feature a new driver tim Schendel. with no dnqs again the 47 Schendel ran just four clean laps of practice placing 31st he would best his qualifying time not by much only besting 39th same as speed since Schendel qualified so far back he was already near the rear and just decided to start where he was. After his teammate, the 46, had parked, the 47 had followed, logging just three laps after falling out with overheating issues, collecting $11,345 in purse money, and keeping the 47, 47th in owner points. This would be Tim Schendel's only start in the 47 in 2012. Race number 11 at Charlotte featured a returning Scott Speed. Speed once again showed the promising speed he had earlier in the season, practicing 20th in practice one and 36th in practice two. Speed got the 47 its best qualifying run in five races, placing a solid 30th. Following the similar model, Speed dropped to the rear prior to the start of the race, and after just two laps, followed the 10 into the garage. Speed and the 47 total logged five laps, after falling out with electrical issues and collecting $10,270 in purse money and dropping the 47, 49th in the owner's points. Race number 12 at Dover once again featured driver Scott Speed. Speed only ran one lap of practice, but still managed 31st on the charts. Speed pulled off an amazing upset in qualifying, beating out cars with five times his budget and placing a very, very impressive 16th. Unfortunately, as the usual model, the 47 dropped to the rear prior to the start of the race. After following four others to the garage, the 47 speed would get the 47's best finish of the season, finishing 38th after logging four laps, citing a vibration, collecting $12,176 in purse money, and moving the 47 up to 48th in the owner's points. Race number 13 at Michigan saw a new driver for the 47, Matt DiBenedetto. 47 DiBenedetto only ran the third practice, being happy hour, not showing the 47's usual pace with the other drivers, only placing 41st fastest. Qualifying did not far much better as the 47 was placed 
40th on the grid. The 47 would follow the 10 in the 74 into the garage after logging five laps, citing a vibration, collecting $11,135 in purse money, and dropping the 47 back down to 49th in the owner's points. Race number 14 at Road America showed up with once again driver Matt DiBenedetto. DiBenedetto only ran one of the two practices, but showed surprisingly great pace, placing an impressive 23rd, beating teams once again with five times his budget and beating his teammates by over five seconds. The 47, however, could not keep up the same pace for qualifying, slotting in 31st on the grid, but beating his previous best at Michigan of 40th. The 47 did follow the same mantra and did fall to the back prior to the start of the race. After following the 42 and 10 into the garage, the 47 had logged three laps, citing overheating issues, and collected $10,930 in purse money and moved the 47 up to 47th in the owner points. Race number 15 saw returning Scott Speed. As the speed was still there, Number 47 speed qualified a very impressive 22nd on the grid and practice there too, tying the 47's third best qualifying effort so far this year. As per usual, however, the 47 dropped to the rear and ran just two laps after falling out with engine issues and getting its first last place finish 43rd of the season. Collecting $10,053, the 47 would drop to 48th in the owner's points. This would be Scott Speed's last race in the 47 for 2012. Race number 16 at Daytona saw the 47 with its fourth different driver of the season, Cup driver Stephen Light. The 47's Light only participated in the first practice, placing 36th. Just like Talladega, the car didn't seem fully prepped for a plate race, likely still having the intermediate setup still in the car. Nonetheless, the 47 qualified 38th, beating his other three teammates. The 47 did not drop to the rear and did start the race in 38th. Following the 10 to the garage after logging three laps, the 47 cited an overheating issue, finishing 42nd for the seventh time this season. 47 would collect $13,320 in purse money, and moving the 47 up to 47th in the owner points. Race number 17 at New Hampshire saw once again driver Stephen Light. Light would only participate in the first practice session, placing 29th with no DNQs. Light put up a solid lap in qualifying of 31st. Light did drop to the rear as usual, and just like Daytona, following the 10 to the garage after logging three laps, citing an overheating issue, and finishing 42nd for the eighth time this season. 47 collected $13,320 in purse money, and the 47 would drop to 48th in the owner points. Race 18 at Chicago saw driver Stephen Light once again. Same as the last two races, the 47 Light only participated in the first practice session, placing 37th. 47 Light would prove Tremendously in qualifying, sliding in at 31st. However, as per usual, would drop to the rear at the start of the race. 47 followed the 15 and the 10 into the garage after logging six laps, falling out due to a clutch issue and collecting $11,965 in purse money and moving the 47 up to 47th in the owner points. Race number 19 at Indianapolis solved the 47 with driver Stephen Light once again. Number 47 Light would only compete in the first practice session, ending up 32nd after running seven laps. 47 picked up over a second from practice, but only stayed 32nd fastest on the grid. Unfortunately, prior to the green flag, a legit engine issue brought the 47 to the pits. The 47 Light nursed the car around to at least take the green flag, but brought it in immediately. Not registering a lap completed, 47 Light was credited with Zero laps logged after falling out with an engine issue. Finishing 43rd for just a second time this season, collecting $18,035 in purse money and dropping the 47 to 48th in the owner's points. The second Iowa race of the season saw returning Matt DiBenedetto to the driver's seat, but originally that was not the case. 
the original driver of the 47 was supposed to be Tim Schendel driving the 47 car, having drove it in the first Iowa race. Schindel would actually practice the 47 impressively into 23rd on the charts. However, after practice, Schindel swapped cars with De Benedetto, who was driving the teammate 42 car. 47 De Benedetto qualified the 47 30th and would drop to the rear prior of the start of the race. 47 De Benedetto would then follow the 46 and the 91 to the garage, ending up 41st after citing a vibration, logging six laps collecting $11,465 and keeping the 48, the 47, 48th in the owner's points. Race number 21 at Watkins Glen saw a returning Stephen Light. Light would just run two laps of practice, but placed a solid 35th with 47 cars showing up. Needing to qualify on time, number 47 Light put up an amazing lap to get himself in the show, slotting in 22nd on the grid. 47 dropped to the rear, sadly, before the start, pulling in just after the crash car of the number seven, Danica Patrick, went to the garage. 47 ended up 42nd, citing brake issues after logging two laps, collecting $9,615 in purse money, and keeping the 47 48th in the owner's points. Race number 22 at Montreal saw the return of De Benedetto to the 47. Competing in both practice sessions, the 47 placed 42nd in the first one and 35th in the second one. De Benedetto barely made the show in the 47. All they had to do was beat just one car, and they did, beating the 52 from Jimmy Means Racing by just four tenths of a second and landing up 43rd on the grid, just for the third time this season. The 47 of De Benedetto was the fourth car to pull off just after the 42, 46, and the 10, finishing 40th the 47's best result in over 10 races. 47 cited overheating issues after completing six laps, collecting $19,710 in purse money, and dropping the 47 down to 49th in the owner's points. Bristol would see the return of Stephen Light. After practicing 40th, 47 Light needed more of a solid lap in qualifying to make the show. However, 47 Light would get loose entering turn one on his first qualifying lap, sliding up out of the groove and hitting the wall in turn two. That made the first lap a complete throwaway. The 47 on lap two set a 16.593 on the second lap, which turned out to be just 45 one thousandths of a second short of making the field, despite the damage that he had suffered from hitting the wall. Light was listed 43rd on time trials, but with no provisionals to use, the 47 went home and suffered its second DNQ of the season. This would be Stephen Light's last appearance in the 47 car. Race number 24 at Atlanta saw a new driver, the fifth one of the season for the 47, in J.J. Yaley. Yaley, still driving the same car that Light had wrecked at Bristol, put up a respectable run in practice of 31st. Qualifying on the same tire as a practice, obviously Yaley's time was going to be slower, but still good enough to make the show and slot in in 34th. Yaley followed the same model as before, falling to the rear just before the start. 47 pulled off just after the 52 had crashed, logging three laps, finishing 42nd, citing an overheating issue, collecting $9,365 in purse money, and moving the 47 up to 48th in the owner's points. Race number 25 at Richmond once again featured driver J.J. Yaley. 47 Yaley only ran five laps of practice in the only session, placing 33rd. But with 47 cars in the show, the 47 would need a better qualifying run to solidify himself in the show. Yaley would put on a very, very strong qualifying lap in the 47's eighth top 25 qualifying run of the season, slotting in in 25th place. However, as usual with the 47, it would drop to the rear prior before the start. 47 Rayleigh ran seven laps, the most since the previous Richmond race earlier in the season with driver Scott Speed 18 races ago. The 47 would follow the 10 and the 46 to the garage after completing the seven laps, finishing 41st, citing brake issues, and collecting $12,515 in purse money and keeping the 47 48th in the owner's points. Race number 26 at Chicago would feature driver J.J. Ailey once again. 
Yaley would compete in just one of the practice sessions, putting up an amazing lap of 24th quickest. Even though the 47 of Yaley did pick up over a second from practice, Yaley only managed 28th on the qualifying charts. As per usual, though, the 47 dropped to the rear prior of the green flag. Yaley logged the most laps the 47 car had done all year, pulling off after 11 laps, citing a vibration. Finishing 40th, collecting $13,830 in purse money and keeping the 47 48th in the owner's points. Race number 27 at Kentucky would feature the return of Matt Benedetto. 47 Benedetto participated in the first practice, putting up a solid lap of 26th place and running just two laps in the second one, only running though 31st. As per usual, the 47 would drop to the rear following his 31st place qualifying run, pulling off after 10 laps following the 42 and the 10 to the garage, finishing 41st, citing a vibration, collecting $10,150 in purse money, and keeping the 47 48th in the owner's points. This would be DiBenedetto's last appearance in the 47 car. Race number 28 at Dover featured the 47's sixth different driver of 2012 in TJ Bell. 47 Bell ran an amazing 26th in practice, having never driven this car before, although he did not improve his time from practice, only qualifying 36th. Bell did not fall to the rear, however, as he was already at the back of the pack anyway. 47 Bell pulled off after six laps, following the 15 and the 10 to the garage, finishing 41st, siding vibration, collecting $11,990 in purse money, and dropping the 47 to 49th in the owner's points. This would be Bell's only appearance in the 47 for 2012. Race 29 at Charlotte would see the return of J.J. Yaley to the 47. Yaley would start a lap in the first practice session, but never actually finished it. The 47 Yaley's teammate, Chase Miller, would actually end up driving the 47 in the second practice, running just two laps, placing 38th. Yaley would return to the 47 seat for qualifying, making the show and slotting in 30th. Yaley would start the race from 30th, did not drop to the rear, and set a new high for the most laps the 47 had done in 2012, running 18 laps. After pulling off after 18 laps, Yaley would finish 38th, tying the best finish of the year for the 47, collecting $9,336 in purse money and keeping the 47 49th in the owner's points. Race number 30 at Kansas once again saw driver J.J. Yaley. Yaley just participated in one of the three practice sessions, placing inside the top 35. 47 Yaley did improve a lot in qualifying, slotting in 28th on the grid. However, per usual, the 47 would drop to the rear before the prior start of the race, following the 74, 10, and 46 to the garage, finishing 40th after logging nine laps, citing a vibration, collecting $13,380 in purse money, and keeping the 47 49th in the owner's points. Race number 31 at Texas once again featured driver J.J. Yaley. Yaley would only participate in the first practice session, putting up a solid lap inside the top 30. Yaley matched that lap in qualifying, start, slotting 29th on the grid. As per usual, though, Yaley would fall to the rear prior to the start of the race. 47 Yaley would pull off following the 42 and 50 to the garage, finishing 41st after logging seven laps, citing a brake issue, collecting $11,335 in purse money, and keeping the 47 49th in the owner's points. Race number 32 at Phoenix would once again see driver J.J. Yaley. Yaley, like usual, would only participate in one of the two practice sessions, placing inside the top 30 again. 47 Yaley did improve a lot in qualifying for the second week in a row, slotting in 28th on the grid. Like usual, though, Yaley would fall to the rear. 47 Yaley would pull off following five others to the garage, finishing 38th, tying the 47's best finish of the year for a third time, logging 17 laps, citing a rear gear issue, collecting $15,125 in purse money, and keeping the 47 49th in the owner's points. Heading into the final race of the season, race number 33 at Homestead, Yaley participated in only the first practice session, only getting a best of 40th. Needing to make the show on time, 
Yaley needed to prove it in qualifying lap. Despite improving from practice, Yaley was only 43rd on the time charts and didn't have any provisionals to use. This would mark the 47's third DNQ of the year for the final race of 2012. The 2012 season for the 47 drivers look at like this. Scott Speed attended 12 races, making 11 of them. Daytona number one being the DNQ. Speed had an average start of 27.6 and an average finish of 41.2 with a best finish of 38th. J.J. Yaley attempted eight races, making seven of them, Homestead being the DNQ. Yaley would have an average start of 28.8, an average finish of 40th, and a best finish of 38th. Stephen Light would attempt six races, making five of them, Bristol number two being the DNQ. Light would have an average start of 30.8 and an average finish of 42nd, with a best finish of 41st. Matt Benedetto ran five races with an average start of 35th and an average finish of 40.8 with a best finish of 40th. Tim Schendel ran one race with an average start of 39th and an average finish of 42nd with his best finish being, of course, 42nd. TJ Bell ran one race with an average start of 36th and an average finish of 41st with, of course, his best finish being 41st. TMG 47 car results for 2012 are as this. Six different drivers making 30 of the 33 races, zero laps led. The purse money total for the season for the 30 races that they made was $374,005 for the season. 47 car had an average start of 30.3 and an average finish of 41st and a 39th place finish in the owner's points. The Motorsports Group managed to start and park the 47 on the entire season with just one car. Very impressive effort by a low-budget team and truly a start and park season to remember. Thank you to the following photographers for pictures of the 47 car. David Pequeen, Taylor Ness, Michael Dan Sirau, sorry if I botched that, RD Photo Facebook, Dover International Speedway Facebook, the Hot Lap, Phil Cavalli, Bob Fina, and Rami Masroar. Thank you again, guys, for tuning into the very first episode of Start and Park Seasons, and I hope you guys like, subscribe for more Start and Park fun. So long, guys.